One of the things I picked up last night, the thing about the Steelers not wanting one of these guys is real. Right. As stupid as it sounds, they want to go Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph. What the hell? What are they thinking? They're just – they're not a team that usually makes those type of aggressive moves. They believe in, hey, we got our guys in-house. There's a reason we got them here anyways. Draft, develop. They think they're part of the culture. They don't want to ruffle the feathers that way. A little bit of an old-school mindset I think the Steelers have, right? And they're a team that – you know, I think Mike Tomlin, being a defensive coach – He's seen it done a lot of different ways where he doesn't make it all about the quarterback like we talk about, too. He's like, wait, 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 the team's got a lot of issues here, right? And I do think, especially with his success, and this is where I'd go, oh, I wish you'd find an upgrade, Mike, Mike Tomlin, because, you know, I think the fact that he can manage so many of these games and they pull these games out of their butt all the time because of his coaching and the physicality they play with, I think he kind of looks at it like, hey, we don't need a superstar. We can get it done in a lot of different ways. But I don't think their team is there yet to make those type of guys look the way we all want them to look. So I'm with you, and I'm not totally sold on all that. I'm not sure that's not a little posturing, too. Part of the conversation was, but but that's the thing. Yeah. I'm talking to people who are talking to the people who aren't posturing. It's like, this is what we're going to do. Like, not, hey, you know, because what what – that's what I believe that they really aren't going to do. I, it. I don't and doubt that. If at you all. have Russell Wilson yeah. available, if he's right. truly going to take 1.2 million on a one-year deal, stick right. the Broncos with the rest because the Broncos own 39 million fully guaranteed minus the 1.21. How would you not bring in Russell Wilson yeah. instead of Kenny Pickett? At least let him compete. And that gets into the whole Broncos. Will Russell Wilson be available? You and I firmly believe, and it really is. I'm not going to name names, but like. Until as recently as late last week, people were saying, don't rule out Russell Wilson with the Bronx. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't yes, see rule it out. Yeah. Rule it out. He's not staying in Denver. Payton, he's going to be cut. First of all, Peyton's at the point where he's ready to move on to somebody else. And second of all, he's got that $37 million injury guarantee for 2025 that becomes fully guaranteed on March 17. He's never going to agree to delay that, and they're not going to commit another $37 million. That's not what Sean Payton does. Sean Payton has said on this program and elsewhere, when it comes to a team that has made a mistake, you don't double down. Right. You admit it, and you move on. Yeah. So they're going to take a big cap hit more next year than this year, but they're moving on from it. That's just the way it goes. So anyway, let's hear from Sean Payton from yesterday on the timeline of the decision that will be made inevitably about Russell Wilson. Here he is. I expect that we're going to know fairly quickly. I said it's the Super Bowl, but I think more specifically, I think uh, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood next week, we're, we're going to – there's a couple factors here. You know, obviously the cap projections came out. Um, we're further down the road with the draft class, uh, obviously the pro free agents. <clears throat> so I would I would anticipate it being uh, you know within the next two weeks. I, I I saw this like humorous meme the other day where there was a Bronco fan with a shirt on and there was like eight quarterbacks names with a cross through it you know and and he's drinking the quarterback Kool Aid and I, you know our, our job is to make sure that this next one you know doesn't have a line through it. Well, they've been a lot of quarterbacks in Denver since Peyton Manning, when you think about it. It is almost like the Browns yeah. in that classic shirt that went all the way down one column and then into another column. Well, didn't but he that's just say the next one? I mean, didn't he the just next one. Us? Well, yeah. 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 And look, there's no way – that's a great point. Good catch. There's no way they're keeping Russell Wilson. Yeah. There's no way in hell. I, d- I don't see it. And in the point. next couple of weeks, look right. – they the way can Russell cut Wilson handled the whole situation, I think some of the things he said, that just goes against everything we know Sean Payton likes, respects, right? The, the play, all of that, and then the money and all those type of things. I think, yes, well, I'm with you there. mischaracterizing things that the Broncos said to right, him. Right, Mischaracterizing the way the NFL He made a comment it. about the injury They wanted me to waive my right? injury guarantee. They never true. wanted him to give up his no, injury guarantee. Right. They wanted him to delay right. the date on which the injury guarantee becomes a full guarantee because yeah. they didn't want him to get injured at some point down the stretch in 2023 if you can't pass a physical by the day that that 
guarantee flips to full, so move you're back. stuck. Right. So they wanted to move it back. Right. So if he did get injured, he still had the injury protection, but they have more time before it's fully guaranteed. Right. That's what the whole purpose of it was when yep. it first came up. But it got twisted around, and he talks about it. And a guy who's a Bill Parcells disciple is not going to look kindly on that. And even without that, if Russell Wilson isn't going to agree to delay that contractual term that was put in there for his benefit, he, he, they're going to cut him. Yeah. And the reason why it's going to be the next couple of weeks, they need to do a post-June 1 release. You can't do a post-June 1 release until after the league year begins. Yeah, right. That's the key. Right. So if they cut him now, they're taking the full cap charge, and it's more than $80 million next year. If they wait until March 13, they can do post-June 1, and that makes it easier this year, bigger next year. But with the cap going up, see, that's that yeah. makes it – Yeah. That, I hear you. That makes it easier to say we're going to rip off the Band-Aid, and maybe they'll have some cap space left over to go get a veteran quarterback. There's, I mean, again, there's going to be options. And I think with Sean Payton, his offense, his confidence in himself, right, what his offense can do, yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see them draft a quarterback, do anything along those lines, get a – one or two year band aid type of guy that he feels like can run his offense to you know the best capabilities of anybody that's out there, and then okay we'll figure it out as we go with the guy they draft this year or somebody else. But I don't think he's going to be scared to do that. I think the bottom line is with Russell Wilson and all that. There's a guy that could not run his entire offense. There's no point in having Sean Payton like we said back in the day, right when this all came about where I went, there's no point in having Sean Payton and paying him $18 million a year, and we're going to run the same 10 pass plays all the time. You don't need Sean Payton to do that. Sean Payton, the greatness of him is he can throw 90 million plays and rules and checks at you, and if the quarterback can do all that stuff at the line of scrimmage and handle all that, you're going to be in a successful position almost 98% of the time as a quarterback for Sean Payton. Right? We know Drew Brees was that. He had backups behind Drew Brees who used to come in and tear it up as well. We saw that. Right, So once he starts to get guys that he knows fit his system and can understand what he's coaching all the time and doing that, that's when the greatness of Sean Payton comes out. And look, something that you said at or about the time that Wilson was benched for Jared Stidham, when you watch the Broncos play exactly pre-snap, Russell Wilson didn't do any of that stuff no. that we see other quarterbacks do. No. Where you're directing traffic, right. 52 is the mic. Right. First of all, it's taken him a while to get the play in anyway. Exactly that was an right. issue with Nathaniel Hackett. Yep. It was an issue again this year. Right. With it was Sean an issue Payne. in Seattle. It limits the amount of time that you have to assess. When there's there's a certain truth about let Russ cook. Yeah. Russ wants to to cook on the fly. Russ yeah, right. wants the ball Ray wants in to his drop hands. back. He wants to look at the Russ rush. Russ wants to make wants to magic. Make move. Right. Yeah. He wants to cook right. post snap. Yeah. He isn't you know, all that interested in lining up the yeah, ingredients. He doesn't want to dice up the onions. Exactly. And do all that stuff. He just wants right. to throw it all in the pot right. and go. Let's right. go, baby. Right. And I think that is the basic, fundamental, ultimate reason why it's not working and why there's going to be a change. Before we take a break. Yeah. Of the available guys Ooh. who have playing experience, right. who. Stands out, if anyone, as a Sean Payton guy. I know. You know, and uh, I need to think about this more. But I look at, like, guys that are like Ryan Tannehill. I would not be shocked to go, oh, okay, that guy can run the offense and do the things he likes to do. There's, I think, going to be maybe a chance at Mac Jones, right? Who else am I missing out there that we've talked about that could be uh, Cousins available? Cousins doesn't fit there, does he? I mean, Cousins Even, would it's fit. It's too much. It's I mean, too much. I would think that would be a lot to have the Russell hit, and then if Kirk Cousins is looking for something market type, that's going to be. But he certainly would fit that offense. He would. I think Peyton. He's a poor man's Drew Brees in a lot of ways. But I think Peyton was would be far more drawn to the idea of finding a guy who is perceived as a failure and turning him into a star. I, I hear you there. Like he did with Drew Brees. Right. Right. Drew Brees was not a no-brainer, got to sign this guy, and all your problems no, are answered. He exactly had a messed right. up shoulder. It was him and the Dolphins. The Dolphins, he wanted to sign with Miami, and the Dolphins said, well, at least the Dolphins doctor. Remember the doctor who, as Nick Saban said, didn't know his ass from a bag of sand. <laughs> that right. doctor said, we can't sign this guy. Right. So this was all reclamation rehab. And I think if you want to win the PR battle long term against anyone who would say, 
Sean Payton didn't know how to coach Russell Wilson. Sean Payton was the problem, not Russell Wilson. If you bring in a guy who's embattled, who has struggled, who is perceived to have failed elsewhere, and you turn him into a great quarterback, you prove that you were the one who, were, who was right. Yeah. You know how to find a quarterback right. and make him work within your system. No, I, I think there's, there's some validity to what you're saying there and what a coach thinks and how he thinks that way, definitely. Who so. was telling us yesterday about the whole idea? Because we talked to so many different people. I can't remember. You don't want the quarterback to jump off the high dive on every play. Wasn't yeah. that a Peyton thing? Uh, yes. Who was saying it? Oh, gosh, who was saying that to us? Somebody was saying it. Well, yeah. I just can't remember who. I, I can't remember, too, either. You want to make it easy for right. the quarterback. Well, it doesn't need to be, you know, like what we talk about with Josh Allen sometimes. He's always on the high dive, and we're like, what's he going to do? Is he going to do the triple gainer here yeah. or whatever? Triple Indy. Triple Indy, right. You know, <laughs> is he going to do that, or is he going to do nine backflips? And, and – yeah, I, well, who the heck was it? But at the at the end of the day, the point was, how about we? Oh, it was Kevin O'Connell? I think wasn't it? I don't think it was him. No, it wasn't. I remember that. He was making the point. I remember of, everything Kevin O'Connell let's said. Let's not make the quarterback be a hero. You know, fifty times a game. How about we just you know execute the offense? And you got to be a hero like three times a game, right? It might have been Brian Callahan. Yeah, it might have been Brian Callahan. Well, you know what? We'll find out because he's coming up next. We're, we're playing Brian Callahan's interview from yesterday before the roller coaster ride started. When we went live for three hours, we talked to the new Titans head coach Brian Callahan. You'll hear him next, and you'll find out, as will we, whether or not he's the one that talked about not having the quarterback jump off the high dive. More PFT Live right after this. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.